Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to assess um, the baby. So um, before I start that, I'm going to provide some hand hygiene. And if baby is sleeping, this is the best time to get the respiratory rate. So uh, before you do anything, uh, you want to make sure that if, if baby's sleeping, you can get your uh, respiratory rate. If you if baby's so bundled up and you really can't see the movement, I kind of just lay my hand on the baby lightly and count. You know, watch the clock and you count respiratory rate on an infant and newborn for a full 60 seconds. Okay, so we'll just assume 60 seconds went by. Um, the next thing you would want to check is your heart rate because if you stick the thermometer under their arm, uh, they're going to be upset and their heart rate's going to go up. So we're going to check the heart rate, and you would definitely, you know, clean the stethoscope, uh, clean the stethoscope before putting it on the baby's chest, and you just put. And this is an adult stethoscope. There will be, um, you know, pediatric neonatal stethoscopes available for you in the um, family birthing center. So you put the stethoscope on, and again, you will count for a full minute. And I'm just going to warn you that it's, it goes very fast. And a lot of times I'll tap my finger with the rhythm, uh, or I tap my foot. It's, but it's, when you first hear a, new, a newborn heart rate, it's very challenging. Because the normal heart rate could be anywhere between 120 and 160. Okay, so at that point, uh, a minute's up. I counted the, res the respiratory rate, I have the heart rate. Now, again, I want the baby as quiet as can be because now I'm going to check the breath sounds. So I just go right into my breath sounds. On skin, right? Hmm? On skin? On skin. Yeah, they'll have a t-shirt on, so you, you might have to go sticking it under. Okay. So um, we got that. So now we can um, get my little thermometer here. But first, I'm going to palpate the top of the baby's. Oh, the fontanelle. Uh, fontanelle. Okay, and I want to make sure that it's nice and flat. We have the anterior fontanelle, which is uh, diamond shaped. It's bigger, and then you can feel along the suture lines. You, you know, you feel the fontanelle, and then you follow the suture line back to the posterior fontanelle, which is a little smaller almost the size of the tip of your finger. Um, and then you can tell if the um, sutures are, if they're flat, overriding, or separated. Sometimes you'll feel them separate. If, at this point, baby's probably gonna start waking up, maybe not, um, but you can see if baby's awake and alert. So now I'm gonna just check the temperature before I move on so I don't forget to do the temperature. Maybe we don't have any probes, but we'll pretend I have a, put a probe on here. Okay. And you will do an axillary temperature on the baby. And at this point, you can unwrap the baby. And you'll take the arm, and you're going to put it right in the middle of the axilla. And then you're going to pull the arm down and just hold it in place until you hear the beep. Sorry. OK, so that's how it. And I like to hold it tight. And then you wait till for it to beep, OK? And um, you'll learn what the normal temperature is, but we're just demoing the, the assessment right now. Okay, so we got the temperature. Now I'm going to put my stethoscope back on, because then I'm going to listen to bowel sounds. And then at this point, you can put baby on the side, always supporting the head, and just listen to the breath sounds in the back. So we have good bowel sounds, we've got clear breath sounds. Um, I also like to check the, um, the hand grasp, so I put my fingers in the baby's middle of the baby's palms, and then they, it's a reflex, and they usually grab you, and they hold real tight. And then if you let go, they should do this startle reflex, which is a moral reflex, which is perfectly normal. And then you're going to move down to, um, you're going to undo the diaper. Now this is not a real diaper, so we'll just pretend it is, but you just want to make sure that you check. Uh, always you're going to change the baby's diaper during your assessment um, because if there's if there's typically something in there, not stool, then there's urine. 
So then you would just check the genitalia, make sure everything's normal, that there's no rashes, any, no skin lesions. Uh, put a fresh diaper on, you may have to, you know, clean if there's, um, we do need to be making sure that we document their first void in their first stool. Well, stool is easy, it's the meconium, it looks like tar, but sometimes it's hard um, if you're trying to see if the baby has voided. And sometimes with the diapers, you have to like rip open because they're so absorbent, it's hard to tell. You can rip it open and see if you see any color. And you're gonna make sure that the baby's movements are all symmetrical, um, that there's both arms are moving because sometimes they can have some damage to their brachial, brachial plexus and they might have limited mobility. Um, okay, so then you can also palpate the baby's fetal pulses. Again, noting symmetry of movement. You can um, check for a congenital hip. So you um, put the baby flexed with, and then you can go like this and you try to listen or feel for like a hip click. And then you rotate around in a circle and you're also trying to feel or hear for a hip click. All right, and that completes the um, assessment for a newborn baby. Uh, after you've changed the diaper, put a fresh t-shirt on the baby then you also want to make sure that you swaddle the baby. Um, whenever you take the baby out of the crib, you want to make sure you support the back of the head because they have no head control. And then you can just hold the baby, and obviously this baby is bigger than a normal <laughs> newborn would be. And then you have your blanket, and usually you get a fresh blanket, and we, don't just, we only have this one blanket. And you put it in, you have the diamond shape, but you put the tip of the blanket here at the head. And you lay the baby in the middle of it. And then you take, you go from third base to first base. And you go from home plate to the outfield. And sometimes you can tuck this under. It's hard because it's not the right kind of blanket. And then from first base all the way around. And baby is either on pretty much back. Sometimes you can put a little slightly on their side, but we it is big, um, putting the baby back. Um, the last thing I, you know, I forgot to check uh, before I started this, and this is something you need to also add to your assessment. I'm just going to undo the baby. Uh, even though the baby's been in the mom's room, I like to verify. Never assume that when you know another nurse brings the baby back that she did this. So I'm just going to verify with mom. I just want you to read your ID band number to me, please. Five, four, six, eight, nine. And then you read it back. Five, four, six, eight, nine. And this is baby girl. Uh, Therese. And she'll say yes. But it's always that she says she reads it to you, then you read it back. If you start reading it to her, I always say this because like in the middle of the night sometimes, or even in the daytime, they might be really sleepy. And they'll just say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like them to read it to me first. And so you verify that that's the right baby. And then they will have... Um, an alarm uh, uh, on their ankle, actually no, I think now it's on their umbilicus, um, that you want to make sure that that's al that alarm is on to prevent infant abduction. So you would just document that that's intact. Okay, well that completes our assessment. Um, I'm really big on, you know, IDing baby with mom, so you need to do that um, each time you want to swaddle the baby, just verify. Okay. And then you can either, at this point, if baby's awake, you can, you know, give baby to mom. And if she's breastfeeding, she can attempt to breastfeed if it's time. And we are done.